Well, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome. Thank you all for coming. And especially, uh, you don't just travel all the way from all the way. I don't think there's anybody else has come. I would not exchange the sorrows of my heart for the joys of the multitude, and I would not have the tears that sadness makes to flow from my every part turn into laughter. I would that my life remain a tear and a smile, a tear to purify my heart and give me understanding of life's secret and hidden things, a smile to draw me nigh to the sons of my kind and to be a symbol of my glorification of God. A tear to unite me with those of broken hearts, a smile to be a sign of my joy in existence. I would rather that I died in yearning and longing that I had lived weary and despairing. I want the hunger for love and beauty to be in the depths of my spirit, for I have seen those who are satisfied, the most wretched of people. I have heard the sighs of those in yearning and longing. It is sweeter than the sweetest melody. With even co coming, the flower folds her petals and sleeps, embracing her longing. At morning's approach, she opes her, opens her lips to meet the sun's kiss. The life of a flower is, is longing and fulfillment, a tear and a smile. The waters of the sea became vapor and rise and come together and are a cloud and the cloud floats above the hills and valleys until it meets the gentle breeze then falls weeping to the field and joins with the brooks and river to return to the sea its home the life of a cloud is parting and meeting a tear and a smile and so does a spirit become separated from the greater spirit to move in the world of matter and pass as a cloud over the mountain of sorrow and, and the plain of joy to meet the breeze of death and return whence it came. It is said that when we face death, we have a vision of our past life flitting through our brains in a jiffy. That is not the case with me that night of the elephants. Rather, it came afterwards when all my adrenaline had pumped out, my mouth still dry and my leg muscles slowly reactivating. For over five hours, we had been repeatedly charged by more than 100 angry elephants in wanky game reserve. That we survived is nothing short of a miracle and I limply reflected on some of the other miracles that happened in the course of my life. When I was five, I survived the breakneck experience of a runaway Maxwell on a dangerous mountain road, 
and a few years later I was again spared when, in the act of mounting my first horse, it took off as if it were a determined contender in the Grand National, leaving me to hang on to its mane and anything else I could find. There, then there was the time I f first fell in love. When things went wrong, I thought that it was the end of the world and life would never be the same again. It was the same when I lost my first beloved dog and I resolved not to replace him as no one could ever take his place. Fortunately, we heal quickly, mentally and physically when we are young. I never resorted to fortune tellers, clairvoyants or spiritualists in my eagerness to see into the future. But when I was 19, I was lured into participating in a game played on a Ouija board with distressing results. It was a costly lesson to learn and a pity that my fingers were not scorched on the bottom of that tumbler that was self-propelling its way across the Ouija board. Maybe that way the events that followed could have been avoided. Just as well we can't see into the future. For most of us, nothing is but hard slog, study, learning from experience. Not to mention the aches and pains and the things that go wump, only, not only in the night. What also flitted through my tired mind was the miracle of new life, the birth of my two children and the sudden untimely death of their father, his life snuffed out by something so small compared to an elephant, let alone dozens of them. Why was I spared? Then there was the odd association with a man that was totally wrong for me but, but drew me like a candlelight towards a bewitched moth. It turned out it may have been ordained as it resulted in my becoming a career woman, a very risky thing to do in a man's world at that time. To have become the first woman fellow of the Institute of Directors of Rhodesia was something of an achievement, but it came at a price, not only the price of presumption, but the price of pain. For years, the pain that niggled and nagged in my left side established itself on a full-time basis, and the major surgery that followed left the surgeon somewhat be bewildered as to how I had survived for so long. The other miracle is that I managed to rear my two children at the same time as directing my companies, and they have turned out trumps, the one in the field of music and the other in the field of law. My daughter has always been terrified of elephants and I couldn't help wondering how she would have reacted if she'd been in my place that night, as she could easily have because she'd been invited. Thank goodness she declined the invitation uh, to, an, uh, to overnight in Wanky, very emphatically.
stepmother, my um, special bond with my brother. We had a difficult call. And uh, went with this guy, and we got our grand. And uh, it was straight off towards it, and grand moaned a bit. And it was the first thing right decision to make. And I'm so grateful that you did. I'm so grateful that you were strong enough to just go with what you knew needed to be done and done. And that we could have you here with us for the last two years. I'm really grateful, I'm grateful for the time you spent with her. <laughs> Call Richard, Richard will sort it out. <laughs> and just did everything that needed to be done with the ground. And she relied on him and you just came. You were there for her. I'm really grateful for what you did. Yeah, yeah. Never ever let it stop her. 
She was elegant, beautiful, intelligent, and above all, epic. She has been the major of our family for decades, and I know without a doubt whatsoever, but I can safely say she is an inspiration to each and every one of us. I thought today to tell you a funny story of two very naughty grandchildren. My cousin and I, at her beautiful home in Broadway, decided when we were little. The house was full of food, beautiful food. My grandma was probably the most stunning food always. But we decided we'd go fish out of the quick ones. I was six and my cousin Elena was twelve. <laughs> and we went and we fished some koi. Oh, the other birds. Koi pop. And we went to the village and then we find it. Oh, so And she caught us. She was so close. She was absolutely livid. But she had a dinner party that evening. So she had to suck it up. She had the most incredible grace. She just put it her tea. And she sat looking at the two of us in dinner, giving us this like, oh, in her lab base too. The next day she thought it was the funniest thing ever and we laughed and laughed. But we were very naughty. And she was so grateful. Fly free, my grand. We will miss you and we will love you forever. This is not a goodbye. It is a thank you. Thank you for being in our lives. Thank you for loving us. And thank you for the memories that we will never ever forget. Cherish forever. Thank you.
Hello everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, uh, my mind is really short. Um, and I've been loving me since I've said it before, so beautifully. Huh? So um, I'm just going to start off with saying how wonderful it is to think of my mum playing on that big little Steinway bread with the Lord. <laughs> um, all the things that she loved so much. I just want to tell a little quick story when um, my mum loved to tell the story. When I was um, very little, my first day of school, I rushed in. I was very, very excited to go to school. And then the second day, mum said, mama said, I put my suitcase down and said, I've had enough of school. <laughs> I'm not going in there. <laughs> Nothing in the way. And I just howled and screamed and kept up such a fuss. And mum mum didn't know what to do. So this beautiful nun came out and she said to mum, You go, leave her with me. I'll look after her. And she was so awesome, beautiful and in control. She took me by the hand, took me into a music room, <coughs> and um, mum sort of edged off and wet, little Anna, um, you know, woolly me, but she went. Um, and that was my first introduction, I have a very memory of illness, to Sister Loyola, who um, realised that I had a bit of music in me because my mum had already taught me quite a bit before I went to school. We had gone through it. And um, she told mum later, she's quite musical, let's do something about it. <laughs> and so, um, from then on, mum mentored me and encouraged me all through right to licentia. She was right here with me always, encouraging me. It got hard and times got tough and I wanted to give up. She said, no, you carry on. And I think my brother had perhaps the same. <laughs> he knew mum would do for her. She worked so hard mm -hmm. and she got us through everything. Most awesome, awesome mum. And I just want to say what you said so beautifully. Um, her memory, her presence is just, just ever with us and in our hearts. And our memories of her, that is ever green as the trees that she loved so much. And enduring as the stones and the rocks and mountains she climbed. And mama, I can't sing this for you today, but I just want to say the words of the song you and I loved so much. I will lift my eyes to the mountain. From winds cometh thou my help. My help cometh from the Lord.
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor future, nor the powers, neither the height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is Christ Jesus. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come down and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. This is from Revelations 21-7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look! God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain. The old order of things has passed away. He who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything anew. Then He said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost, from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger but great goodness. As a father is tender towards his children, so is the Lord tender to those who fear him. For he knows of what we are, of what we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. The 
days of man are but as grass. He flourishes like a flower in the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place will know it no more. And so to the Lord's most gracious mercy and protection, we now trust that the mortal remains the body and ashes of our sister Clements. We commit her ashes to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died and was buried, and rose again for us. To Him be the glory, for ever and ever, we say together, Amen, Alleluia, Alleluia. And as we have committed the ashes of our sister Clements to the ground, we know with certainty that we will see her again for those of us who believe. And so finally, if we turn over to page 6, we remember the verse from the letter of Jude, and that is to us who believe and who are still alive. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and present you faultless before the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ's glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Saviour, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. We say together, Amen. Amen.
I may stand to receive the blessing. <coughs> the God of peace who brought us all here safely today, take us home into our destination wherever they may be. And now may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest upon us and remain with us this day and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.